Hello and welcome to Heavy Metal Rex. My name is Hawaii and today I'm going to be doing something with a buddy of mine that I've never done before and I've never even seen a whole lot other than on the internet and that is putting a hitch on a WRX. Now I know that a lot of people will tell you don't pull or don't put anything in the back of your WRX but in my personal experience and we were actually just talking about this even in even like shittier older cars I've seen hitches on like my own family car actually had a hitch on it when I was younger and we drove you know all across the country uh, with U-Haul trailers and everything like that. Now, I don't really have a whole lot of information or, or have a lot of experience with this, but my buddy Patrick has done this on his Outback, right? It was on your Outback? Yeah, the, the Subaru one is, is, there's no official hitch for this, so you've got to go aftermarket and it fits a little bit differently, but this is the best hitch solution that I've seen that doesn't have any ground clearance issues for the, the VB platform. All right, so at least, at least one of us knows what he's doing. So I'm just here to document this for anybody else who's looking to do this for their WRX. And like I said, on Facebook, I have seen quite a few cars, a few WRXs that have hitches. I don't know which ones they've done, um, but this is from Torque Lift, and it's called what, the Eco Lift? The Eco Hitch. Eco Hitch. And it actually comes out from the back, doesn't it? Yeah. Like it sticks out from the where the fourth brake light is? Okay. Nice, but this one actually this... can only come out here because of some space issues. Oh, I see. Bumper, I guess. Okay. Well, we'll get the details together. We're going to actually unpack it right now and kind of take a look at it and, and just see what it is. All right, Patrick, show us what we got here. All right. So this came, it's about 55 pounds. I think it was right at 60 pounds shipped. Uh, but Torque Lift did a great job. It was shipped super fast from Washington State. So I uh, can't, can't complain. But. They've got it packaged up pretty nice. There was no no real damage. I mean, when something weighs this much, it's always, you know, something can always get messed up. But everything looks good so far. Um, I've already looked at the instructions and a couple videos of other guys that have done uh, this kind of setup. Everything looks pretty straightforward. The scariest part is just taking the bumper off and having to cut your nice, relatively new bumper. Um, but they supply you all the hardware. Uh, and, and good instructions, I hope. Yeah, yeah. Let's see what we got here. Um, they've got a they've got a full video themselves on doing it, but they've changed things a little bit. I think on the weight on how much you cut because they were having some clearance issues uh, with the actual receiver here. And one cool thing about this this receiver is actually stainless steel, um, so you're not going to have that ugly uh, rusted receiver. Yeah, and if uh, it sticks out from underneath, it's it's good that it's black, so it, it's going to have kind of like a stealth look to it. Yeah, and then it drops off too, so when you're, you know, for me, I'm going to be riding my road bike or, you know, my my backpacking bike on this. In the winter, maybe I'm not riding, you just drop this off and you don't have to worry about uh, it dragging if you want to take it somewhere, if you know you're going to be somewhere where you need clearance. And then they do have the option, I don't know if we're going to install this, but this, that knockout panel where the fourth brake light goes, this actually has a magnet and uh, it attaches to the receiver. Oh, okay. Um, so you can put that knockout panel in there and block that, that bolt. Uh, so it's kind of a, a lot of thoughtful little things uh, on this. But uh, the instructions, and they've got a PDF on their site as well if you do lose this. That's or, probably what I'm going to pull up so I can follow along yeah, as well. But they're pretty self explanatory. They tell you where all the pop clips are at. The only difference is we've got mud flaps on this car, which are going to have to come off because we have to pull back the. We have to pull back the fender flares and then the bumper and the tail lights come out and then the bumper uh, cover comes off and then the crash bar you can see I've got another crash bar because my wife's Outback Wilderness installs in a very similar manner even though it's actually more of a pain than this one is. Uh, so I, that crash bar is that what's going to be going on this car? No. This no crash that's bar from is, the Outback. Yeah this is from okay. the Outback because these guys are blue they paint them body color the, the crash bar and this will be white. Okay. Um, oh yeah. yeah. But but uh, it won't go back on. That's just how they do it. On the VAs, okay. they used to put the crash bar back on. I guess they determined... They well, couldn't. this becomes a crash bar then. This is your crash bar. Whether this seems like a lot sturdier too than, than like what, I, what Subaru actually has on the car. Okay. Especially compared to like the front crash bar. It doesn't look very sturdy. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I don't know. I have mixed feelings about this just because crash bars are meant to deform and crumble mm. whenever you get in a crash. But I'm willing to risk it to have my bike, honestly. So the utility right. of it, but it is what it is. I mean, they do the exact same thing. It, the the Subaru one for the Outback and the the Forester looks almost like this. It's just got a few more supports that go into the subframe. But uh, I think it's going to be fine. All right. So the steps that we need to take, what you were saying, is obviously first we need to take off the the um, the mud flaps. Then we need to take out. So I guess first we need to take out the head, the tail lights, and then we need to pop off the bumper. It's, you can do it, you can do it either, you can pretty much do it either way. I was going to do underneath first and then work my way up. Okay. Do, it'll be mud flap, 
and then this. Uh, oh, the yeah. The fender, the fender cover. That this, should just clip off. I've accidentally taken them off a few times from yeah, front. There's, there's a screw underneath here. Uh -huh. uh, this should just pop off. There should be one. It'll actually come out with this mud flap. Here we go. And then there's two. There's two pop clips. There's one here and here. Four underneath there. Two, three, here, four. On, okay. On the other side. Yeah. And then yeah, flip this out. This bad boy will come out. This little plastic piece will come out. And then there's, I think, two. And then this pretty much comes straight out. So if you didn't have mud flaps, the OEM clips that they ask you to take off, it's, is it these two or is there's one down so below? It would only be this one, actually. This oh, one's, that's the two that's, that they're talking about, that and that? Yep. There, no, this, there would be nothing here. Oh, there's there would, oh, okay. only one here. Or is uh, it this? That, because uh, it says that okay. there's two that have to be popped off. There we go. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll remove it and see what see what happens. There's that, and then it should just be a pop pop. And then this is the bolt that you have to access behind here, so you don't have to take the full thing. Oh, and flat yeah. Off. But if you wanted to, the rest is just it's just clipped now. Yep. All right, so underneath the bumper, the ones, the clips that we're actually looking for, it's it's going to be three clips, one, two, and three, and then there's actually four of them underneath the bumper itself. So like one, two, three, four, and then Patrick's getting the, the ones on the other side, and then once we take off this bolt over here, or on both sides, we should be able to start pulling the bumper, and then move on to the tail lights. So something you guys know, anytime you try to mess around with pop clips, it is a major, major pain in the ass. It could be really easy, or you could spend 20 minutes taking off one pop clip. It looks like the, the one that was holding the end of the bumper on both sides tend to, give us, tend to give us a little bit of trouble, but we got it. These pop clips are a little bit different, but they're essentially the same. You just rotate them a little bit. Oh, okay. The, top of the them, little screwdriver the top of them type. Will come out, and then you're just going to pop them, most likely. Is that the little plastic thing that came with the LEDs? It might have been. Because that's know, I, I have that exact plastic. It came with the the Brisbane LED kit from Amazon, yeah, they and throw, I use it for everything. Yeah, they throw these in with a bunch of stuff, and then I believe this comes out like that. Perfect, and then just and then some two ten mils or Phillips, whatever you want to okay. use. Okay, um, it's already on here. Right here. You got it. I think that is the yeah the ten's already on there. Easy peasy. And they set, they just set into a little stud on the inside. And then just disconnect the tail lights and set it to the side. All right, so now we're just pulling everything. So now it should just be like the front bumper. We should just be able to pull. Yeah, it's just gradual. I mean, you'll do, you'll do the inside or uh, outside in, uh, and you can see they're free here, and just do each side at a time. And just be, be gentle with it. These are new cars, so they're a little better than used cars or older, older cars, but it'll still be good. I can hold on this side free. just in case. At this point. And there it is. Yeah. 
be a little ridiculous, but whatever. So the one of the ones on the right, you said it did need a deep socket? Uh, yeah, the stud, the stud in the middle, because it sticks out, you will need a deep socket for that one. They're and they were all 14 mil? They're all 14 mils. All right, so show me what, what is, is it, this is all the hardware? Yeah, this is all the hardware. This is going to be the one for your receiver that's going to go in last. And these are the four bolts that are going to replace the OEM hardware. They're using a 10.9. A so, I mean, that's a really, that's a pretty strong bolt there. I don't think it's, I think it's going to stretch or anything like that. But uh, just prepping those up. It's got a lock washer that'll go on first, and then a normal washer, and then I believe the torque on it. It's 40 foot pounds, so we'll torque that bad boy down. Okay. It's not crazy, but I really recommend giving it a good torque spec. Don't put any don't put any anti seize or anything on here because you over torque them. You're still only going into the subframe. It's still sheet metal, so. So what we got to do now is we actually do need to cut this portion of the bumper just a little bit. It's, it says, and it, well, we'll go over it again, like an inch and a half on each side and maybe two and some inches. And uh, Patrick's going to measure it, but this is where the receiver is going to go, which is a big hunk of metal. It's actually this guy right here. So we need to make sure that there's enough clearance for it. Oh, it does go inside. Okay. Yeah, so All right, then we do need to put the bumper on. Well, no, I, no, I think it's gonna be no. The uh, what I like for install on this, like it's a really nice touch by them. There's not like a nut you've got to access because you wouldn't be able to access this. They've actually built built thread, it in a threaded nut into this stainless steel receiver, and this bad boy is gonna get torqued down. I think this is a 19 volt bolt, uh, but this is a 112 foot pound. So we'll grab the big, the big tool for that. There's so much space, unless they wanted you to go around this metal. I mean, that's, yeah, maybe that's what it was. Yeah, it's probably for those tow bars. I'm not worried well, about where it. Where does this clip in then? Oh, I, got, I think we got a couple. Oh, yeah. That's. It's for, it's for the chains. It's for the chains. It'll have to come off, I think. Yeah, well. I can maybe cut it while it's on the car. Um, but yeah, it's for. I think it's for these chains because I don't know if it'll go back and get on in the. Uh, yeah, it won't. These the side ones will. Yeah. But these are not doing it. I think I can I can trim that while it's on the car. You think so? So with the cutting, here's the issue that we're in, we're actually having now. Let me see if I can show you guys. This right here won't make it all the way back to where the clip the hole is for the clip on. So what we're gonna have to do is we're actually gonna have to cut a little bit more here because there's some metal right underneath that's keeping this from moving. So let's see. Because like this one here, where is it? This camera is not very good at showing these. So this one will make it, but as you can see, but this one is, it's, it's just way too far. Because I'm not going to have clearance. Yeah. But I'll try it with the razor. 
I think, the, yeah, I think that's what you're gonna need. Because that metal piece is like right on the other side of that plastic. Maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't measure it right. But I'm not no, it looked, it looked right. So it looks like this is actually what's hitting. So we might need to trim this right here. So now we got to take it all off. Yep. Okay. You want to be real careful when putting the bumper back on because the, it needs to be underneath these black tabs. This is where it clips and there's one clip in here that you actually need like a like a pry bar type deal to be able to pull that and put it over the actual yeah, so what, the actual uh, clip. Yeah, so what I did was I kind of, I'll use this to illustrate, but over here, I don't want to pull it out again. Yeah, I don't want to mess with that was it. a pain. But you can kind of see on this one down here. I just kind of wedged it in a little bit, and as I was inserting it, I lifted it up and, and slid Pushed it over it on. while I was pushing the panel on there, and that seemed to do it. But I definitely bent these and almost broke them, but that's what happens. Not a body guy. All right, but you know what? What's most important is this clips up perfectly now. It has enough room. This was what was the issue. And you can see now that it's cut up, it's much closer, and you probably are not going to be able to see, but the holes down here line up very well. So this is the final result. This is, so are you planning on putting anything else here besides the bike rack? You probably won't get anything but a rack on it. I'll probably go to a, like a one-up rack because I've got a heavier uh, bike packing bike that's gonna go on here. But for my road bikes, the Sherpa is fine. Okay. Um, but yeah, I like, I love that it has the two inch receiver on it. So you got options right now. Right, side. yeah. This was originally an inch and a quarter. Uh, I had my other car that I had, but. It works, and uh, I'm pretty impressed with it so far. It feels Yeah, I mean, it sturdy. shouldn't go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> if it did, then uh, we might need to start over. All right, guys, so actually that wasn't as, like, it really wasn't that difficult. I think majority of the time was spent just taking the bumper off and putting the bumper on. The actual installation of the bar was really, really simple to do. And as you can see, it's it looks really good. And if you're looking for a, a, a solution like this, I know a lot of, most Subaru people do some sort of outdoor type of stuff. Um, this is a great solution. If you don't want to, if you don't want to get a roof rack for some reason, this gives you another option and maybe something more sturdy. Because I've seen some of like the roof rack bikes, especially on the highway, they they be swinging. It kind of scares me when, especially the ones that don't take the wheels off. The ones that actually take the wheel, the front wheel off and like bolt it down, I feel less worried about. What do you think, Patrick? Uh, and I mean, the, the roof, the rooftop racks, they're fine, but. As somebody, I've used them all, like, eventually you're going to forget it. You're going to run it into the top of your garage or whatever. These are just stable. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, and then after you're done with a ride, man, a tray style rack is just fantastic. Like, a Kuat or a 1-Up, you know, it's a lot easier to load a heavy bike up on this than it is on anything else. But, yeah, it's the way to go. It's the way to go. Cool. Guys, I hope that video was informative. If you get, I'll actually put the link to all this stuff in the description because this is, again, something that I'm not super familiar with. But if you're looking for something made in America, very sturdy, this is, seems pretty good. I probably could even stand on it and it probably wouldn't break. But uh, if you have any questions, throw them down in the description and I'll try to answer them to the best I can. And I'll see you guys in the next one.